Let me tell you something, Nate. This Super League that we were so hyped about, it is falling apart in front of our very own eyes before it even has the chance to begin. It's very unfortunate, Nate. So this Super League so far has had five out of the 12 teams withdraw from the comp- withdraw from the actual league before it could even start. Like, I'm sorry, Nate, but it's falling apart in front of our very eyes. And um, they said, and I quote, that this is uh, the suspension of this league. They said... Um, They said right here, they said, yes, suspended by a thread over a giant pit of derision, incompetence and failure. Now, again, the reason why this league, again, the reason why this league is literally falling apart before our very eyes. I mean, there's a lot of reasons, Nate, you know, um, this article, it's not like any article we ever, uh, we ever read. It's mostly kind of like the guy giving his opinion, but I want to give my opinion, but we are getting these facts from this guy. So I want to say the source of this article before I start, the source of this article is from Gabriel Marc- Marcotti. He is senior writer at ESPN uh, FC. Let me, but let me give my opinion on this, Nate, okay? First of all, the reason why this league was falling apart is be, I, I want to say the number one reason is because of the fans. The number one reason I think is because of the fans. Now, I, don't, I don't think it's the owner. I think it is because of these fans. So when this first happened, fans flipped out. Fans flipped out that these teams were leaving – these teams were leaving UEFA and FIFA to go set up their own league and fans weren't really too happy about it. You know, they, they wanted them to stay. They want, and honestly, Nate, like you can't start a league really with seven teams. I just can't see it happening. You know, you could, you could, but like, it's just not going to be a good league in my opinion. Um, So far talking about the teams that have uh, decided to withdraw these teams, their teams such as uh, Chelsea, AC Milan, Internazionale, I can't pronounce that right, um, Atletico Madrid, and uh, Barcelona is on the brink. So they haven't yet, but like it looks like they're leaning towards that direction as well. Um, Juventus is still in it. I believe Real Madrid is still in it. So those are two very, uh, very highly praised clubs. So, I mean, when you look at it, Nate, Again, I think the fans were the biggest motivation for this. Because when you're really looking at it, when this first came out, fans were literally livid. I like the idea. I do. You know, but you have to, in order to, here's the thing, Nate, because I got to do this uh, Thursday for a class of mine. In order to have success in a certain project, you have to, you have to build the project. You have to make a pitch for the project, you know? And I think that's something that these owners just didn't do correctly. They didn't pitch it. You know, they're very smart men, very smart businessmen. They're very rich. That doesn't mean anything if you can't pitch the project, you know, in order to, you know, if you're going to put money into something, Nate, you got to make sure money's coming out. But in order for money to come out, you can't just put more money in it. You have to sell it, you know, and it didn't sell it good enough. Like we like the idea. Don't get me wrong. We do like the idea of these teams playing against each other. But for a lot of other fans who have watched soccer for so long, they didn't like this idea. And the reason why is because these owners didn't sell it enough. For new fans, obviously, if we hear about Juventus and Barcelona playing against each other, Messi versus Ronaldo, for me and you, Nate, who don't watch soccer a lot, we're going to watch it. Why? Because we know who Messi and Ronaldo is. It's as simple as that. So, I mean, for these other fans who actually watch soccer, you have to pitch it. You have to pitch it better. You know, you got to pitch it because they watch soccer. You know, they've seen Messi and Ronaldo millions and millions of times. So you have to pitch that idea. It might be tougher to pitch it to them because of what they're used to and what the norm for them is of watching soccer, but you have to pitch it to them better than what you would have pitched it to a, a person who's not a fan, a biggest, a big fan of soccer like me or you. That's the whole point here. And that's something that they didn't do. And when this just came out, they were like, yeah, you know, we're leaving UEFA and we're going to join and we're going to form our own league. That didn't sit well with everybody. It didn't sit, it didn't sit well with the fans. Why? Because again, for a million times, you did not sell it well. So, I mean, look, Nate, there's seven teams left in this tournament. It was supposed to be originally there were like 50, there were 12 teams already in it. And it was supposed to be up to like, and it was probably going to be up to 15. But now it went from possible 15 to seven to possibly seven who could probably drop, you know. Now, look, is it too late for this league? No, I'm not going to say it's completely over. That's not what I'm going to say. But what they need to do is exactly what I've been saying for the past like five minutes now. Sell it. You know, you have an idea. You have a project, okay? Make people want to watch it. Simple as that. I, if, if these teams were just going to withdraw, I don't know why they joined in the first place, really. They probably thought that they were going to get a better reaction or this league was going to get a better reaction than what it got originally. I'm not sure. 
But literally, but we talked about this topic one day, like what, two days ago? Yeah, probably. And two days ago, these were when we had 12 teams that were happy to join this league. Next thing you know, what happens then? Two days later, five of them are gone. Like, come on, come on, think better. That's all I got to say. We got to, this, it's as simple as that. But I mean, you know what? I don't think it's too late for this league, but they better do something quick. They better do something quick that will appeal to the fans because so far they're not on the fan side. And that is the number one, that is the number one aspect of all sports, the fans. Because the fans don't like it, they won't watch it. It's as simple as that. But you know what? Again, uh, I wish UA for the best of luck. I wish FIFA the best of luck. The Super League, I wish them the best of luck. Hopefully they can figure out what they did wrong and they can adjust it and hopefully win back some fans. But, I mean, look, Nate, right now it's not looking good. They better change something. Yeah, Mario, I agree to an extent, and here's why I say that. I don't think I, – I do think it's the fans. Obviously, you know, I, I've been talking to a lot of soccer fans about it. They're not really in for it. But the other reason why I think this um isn't going the way they expected it to is because I feel like this was rushed. Remember when the AAF first came out and, and like, they were having a lot of trouble with funds. They couldn't fill up stadiums because, you know, they weren't getting the funds that they needed. You know, they were selling tickets for God knows how much money. And the legal raw, everybody was just getting injured. They were having trouble replacing people. They didn't think about these kind of things. And that's why the AAF only lasted eight weeks. Personally, Mario, I did not think I'd live to see a league that, uh, live a lot shorter than the AAF. The AAF didn't even last an entire season. This didn't even last two days. And it's already falling apart, Mario. See, it, well, in the AAF's defense, it was falling apart from the very beginning. But they actually, damn, like, I'm, I'm just surprised they actually survived eight weeks, let alone two weeks. But I think the other reason why you also got to put into perspective, if you're going to create a league and take all these teams in, all teams that are, that are very, very popular, by the way, especially out there, especially out there overseas, you got you to gotta have a plan. You can't just create the league and be like, oh, yeah, this is going to work. No, you got you, you to gotta create the plan. Make sure it works before you create. I feel like that's what's going on here. You feel me? I, I, I just feel like this league was just rushed. And especially in a time where, you know, like you said, the fans are heavily demanding. And, you know, we're still in a pandemic, so that could have probably been an issue as well. You know, that's why the XFL got shut down because of the pandemic. But it's – I don't know, Mario. It, I think I think the league was rushed. I think that's why it's falling apart. It's not going the way they wanted it to. Now, obviously, that has to be a factor. You know what I'm saying? But, I mean, with that being said, you know, other than that, you basically covered everything. So, you know, I mean, with that being said, best of luck to the uh, UEFA, best of luck to FIFA, uh, best of luck to Super League. Ho hopefully they can figure something out and figure it out quick because there's not, you know, time's not on their side. You know, this league fell apart in two days. You know what I'm saying? So time really isn't on their side. But with that being said, you know, best of luck to uh, UEFA, best of luck to FIFA, and I can't wait to see how this goes.